I'm going to show you how to analyze some images and recreate their lighting. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. You can find me here at Flurn five days a week making awesome videos to help you guys get better at Photoshop and photography. Today is really cool because we're talking about, we're actually going to analyze three images by three of my favorite photographers. And um, I'm going to go through and show you guys how to figure out how these images are lit. So this is, it's not really done in Photoshop more, it's just, you gotta use this thing. <laughs> and um, when you figure out how these images are lit, the cool benefit it's gonna have for you is that you can actually apply the same things to your images as well. So like figuring out how someone else lights their images, you can do the same thing and you can achieve a very similar effect. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. And then we got a quick little contest. This is pretty cool. All you have to do is find an image online, whatever, it could be your favorite image, figure out how it was lit and then write, post the image and then write a description of how it was your lit. And then one random person is gonna win a free Flurn Pro. And we're gonna have this contest available through Monday at noon Central Standard Time. So it's just super quick. Just find an image, be like, oh yeah. And uh, oh, I think it was like this. And then we're just gonna pick someone totally randomly and you win a Flurn Pro. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. We've got three images today. And the first image is by a photographer, great photographer, great guy named Nick Onkin. And then we've got Anthony Mandler, who if you don't know his work, he's just a boss. And the last one, we have Jill Greenberg. We're gonna go start off simple and we're gonna go get more complex. So we're gonna start off with Nick Onkin. And um, he's got, I would say, a more simple approach to lighting, but uh, I don't mean simple in an unrefined way. He's very, very good. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what Nick Onkin is, uh, is going with, with these shots here. Basically, what I see is mostly a natural light. Um, it's a very natural feel, but we do have a lot of fill light going on in this image as well. So let's just go ahead and I want to pick a nice color so you can see. Um, show our light source. And we can see the light source is from the sun. This isn't faked, by the way. Um, Nick Onkin's not super huge in Photoshop, and um, although he does process colors and this lens flare was maybe added, um, this light in the background is obviously not faked. The light is coming through through the trees. And we can see, in fact, that this is our light source, probably a sunlight right behind her. I would imagine that this like little bit of glare is added in Photoshop afterwards, but that's not a huge deal. So our main light source is, in fact, the sun behind your model. Now, if you guys have shot with a, you know, outdoors and you've got someone backlit, you'll know that a lot of the time you'll wind up with someone who's, um, they're going to be pretty dark. There's like almost in silhouette, depending on the angle of the sun. So what you can do and what I think is done here, again, this is all just me thinking of, about this and how I analyze this, is um, use a giant reflector. Now these are regular, we'll link to those below. You, you can get like a five in one reflector. They're very quick and they're very cheap actually. Basically they just reflect light back on your subject. So I'm going to zoom in and then we're going to just um, use my hand tool here and see what we've got here. So we can see the, the light behind her, but do you see this kind of like light that's here in her eyes? And that is what I'm assuming is our reflector. So it's probably a very large reflector that's catching the light and then hitting it back on your subject. So that's another quick tip for you guys. If you're looking on how to dissect the lighting in a photograph, look at the what's called the catch light in a person's eyes and that's gonna help you figure out how that image was lit. So that light wouldn't really be there necessarily uh, in a totally natural light setting. That's why I believe that there's a reflector and that's aiding this image in its uh, exposure. So all around awesome image, Nick Onken, great photographer. All right, let's go to our next image and this is by Anthony Mandler, who is again, awesome. And <laughs> this is an image by Snoop Dogg. Um, I have a theory that if you just take any picture of Snoop Dogg, you're, it's gonna be cool. I've never seen a bad or stupid picture of Snoop Dogg. Um, <laughs> some people are just always cool no matter what. So this image I like a lot. Um, you guys can probably see there is natural or um, like not natural lighting, but uh, not strobe light going on. These uh, fluorescent bulbs behind um, behind Snoop Dogg here. So those are creating like a little bit of backlight. It's not gonna be much. You can see like there's a, that little bit of a rim right there, right around Snoop in that as well. It's not a whole lot, but it is enough to create some light going on our subject. Now, the next thing we have is, I'm gonna show you guys how to analyze these shadows on his face. Basically, we have a hat here, and then the shadow for the hat is right here. So, photographing people with hats on is really tricky because you can't put your light up too high or you'll just get a giant shadow on the person's face. So, we have the light source is coming from, you know, almost about the same direction as the actual, as the hat. So, it's probably just a little bit higher than the hat. The next thing you wanna look at are things like the shadows on a person's body, shadows on a person's face. 
So we can see that this area of Snoop is in shadow as well as this area. And then this, basically this entire arm here is in shadow as well. So what that tells me is if this is highlight and this is shadow, let's just color the shadow a little bit darker, then our light direction is coming from that way. So our light is coming from that way, causing this to be in highlight and causing that to be in shadow. Also, this is basically all in shadow because the light is hitting basically what is the back of his arm there as well. So I would imagine you can't see really any catch light in Snoop's eyes. I can't anyway, maybe you guys can't. There might be a tiny hint of one, but I can't really see much of a catch light. So I would imagine our light source is a little bit harder here, maybe like a smaller, um, maybe even about the size of like a beauty dish or something like that, or a small soft box, and that would be camera right as well. Now, um, Anthony Mandler does use gels a lot. Let's just make that invisible. There we go. What am I doing here? My space bar, by the way, my space bar stopped working on my computer, so I've got to grab the hand tool, which is uh, stupid. Well, the space bar doesn't stop working, but in Photoshop it has. So if that ever happens to you, by the way, which is something I need to do, you need to reset Photoshop. We'll link to that below on how to reset Photoshop, because if it starts acting weird, that's basically something you need to do. So our light source is coming from the right, and a lot of the time, um, people who are going for more cinematic fill look will use uh, gels to make it a little bit more uh, to get like a warming and a cooling effect. So I think that's what's going on as well here. I think there's a large light source that's blue, and that's as our uh, shining in as our fill light. You can kind of see it there reflecting from the top, probably like reflecting into the ceiling, hitting down, or maybe that's just sky up there. I don't, I don't know, but we can see this like blue light. That would be my, I would assume that this light was probably shining in from above and hitting Snoop and that was, that had a blue gel and then the light to the right would have a warming gel on it. So if you wanted to get a similar look to this, you would use gels, of both like the blue from the side and then the orange um, CTB and CTO from the, uh, the other side. So that is our, um, way of breaking down Snoop Dogg. He's just looking at me and he's so badass. I'm like, I can't think with you, Snoop Dogg. You're just too cool. All right, next we have Jill Greenberg. Now she's actually really famous. She's basically famous for her processing style and her lighting, which is really cool and you can get some great effects here. Um, one thing we have to pay attention here is all of the rim lighting. Basically rim light is anything that's behind a person. Um, hair light is like basically a hair light that's you know you can go from the straight top down or from the back as well so you can kind of mix between a hair and a rim depending on how far behind your subject it is and basically we have a rim light all around our subject here so that tells me that we've got lights all around our subject and here would be my guess on how to do something like this if you wanted to achieve effect like this what i would do is use strip boxes um probably gridded as well Gridded strip boxes are really great because they can direct light on like a long beam. You, they're really great for creating rims and they don't, um, they don't shine light into the camera because they're gridded, they're, you know, they're very restricted and you won't get a lot of flare into your camera. So if you guys are using a lot of backlighting, a lot of rim lighting, I would recommend putting grids on your lights and that'll just keep, keep the flare from entering your lens. So if you have a strip box, basically a strip box is just a long, thin soft box. That's all that is. I know it sounds fancy but you could use two strip boxes on either side. There we go. And that's going to be creating this light that kind of wraps around here. That would be this light as well. This one would create that light that does this all the way around there. Now, going up top, you have a couple options. You could use one long strip box as well, or you know maybe even like two smaller strip boxes. Um, these light sources are, they're long and thin, but I don't think they're using anything like a, just a regular soft box. If a soft box is used, it's probably a softbox that's covering basically the entire distance. So this is all behind the subject and it's pointing directly at their head. So it's out of the frame, but it's pointing light at the subject. Okay, so that's basically all the light from around the subject and that's probably the most important light. Now, the other light that we're gonna look at in this photo is, let's just zoom in here, there we go, is the light that's hitting our subject. And this is, you can tell again from the catch light, what light is hitting your subject. So. In this case, we can see we have three small catch lights, and those are on the bottom. So most people, in, in most photographs, you generally photograph people when they're lit from above. Like, I'm lit from above. There's an umbrella actually right here. Uh, it's lighting me from above. You can see the catch light in my eyes from that. 
Um, most of the time you do want to light people from above because it looks more natural. It gives kind of like a weird look if you light people from below. Um, that's what Joe Greenberg is doing here. She's lighting people from below, but she also happens to be rim lighting them. So it's like, it's a very kind of like weird look. Um, but it comes across looking cool. So we've got three light sources here instead of, um, instead of like maybe a beauty dish over top. So I don't know what these light sources are. They're relatively small. If you guys have any guesses, let me know. Um, you might even seen a like, behind the scenes video of Jill Greenberg. I'm imagining these would probably be like small soft boxes or strip boxes or even like seven inch reflectors. But you can see that there are three of them and those are lighting from below. And the three of them combine to create basically what is um, not a shadowless environment, but you know, if you use a small reflector, you're gonna have like harsh shadows. But if you use three small reflectors right next to each other, the, the shadows kind of combine and it creates what looks like a little bit softer shadow. Not only that, but these images are so retouched that um, if there was a super hard shadow and they didn't want it to be there, uh, that's probably been taken out as well. So that's another thing to look at. Um, so we have those three lights and they're also serving to be, <laughs> this space bar thing is killing me. They're also serving to be the, um, the fill light as well. So it's like the fill and the light that's hitting your subject. And that's, what's creating. If you guys can see like the light, it's on the underside of the cheeks here with the eyes, this, the chin. And, um, that's, you know, we don't have a, like a huge shadow when you have a light source that's off to the top something like this. Usually you'd have a shadow under the chin, but you can see the chin here is just as bright as everything else. So that's our lighting going from simple to complex. So here's my challenge to you guys. Find some images on the internet, figure out how they're lit. Just take a guess. Like it's, <laughs> you can use these same techniques and um, to replicate images on your own. But honestly, it's usually just a guess unless you've actually seen the video or the behind the scenes images and things like that. But doing this is really going to help out. It's going to make sure you're able to figure out, you know, what other people are doing. You can do it by yourself. And this is basically the, the number one way I learned how to light images is just by studying other people's and then trying to do the same thing. That's how I learned and it's worked pretty well for me so far. So I can't wait to see it again. You guys have all the way until Monday to figure out, but just write some cool descriptions and we're going to pick someone random to win. That's it guys. I'm out of here. We actually did a really cool photo shoot uh, yesterday with uh, like kind of like a Jill Greenberg style. So I'm going to show you guys that pretty soon as well. I think that's going to be the next Flurn Pro. So you guys are going to love it. Thanks so much for watching Flurn. I can't wait to see your guys' imageries, images and entries. I just combined those words. Nice. <laughs> I'll Flurn you guys later. Imageries. Oh, I just invented the word imagery. It's the best word ever. I want to surround myself in imageries. I just want to bathe in them. Imageries. Yes, please.